Yeah. Every night I stand here uh -huh. and, and I make jokes mm -hmm. about all of Donald Trump's lies. Mm. Uh -huh. The governor's doing a very good job. He's having a hard time getting the president on the phone. I guess uh, they're, not, they're not being responsive. The federal government is not being responsive. But they're having a very hard time getting the, uh, getting the president on the phone. He won't get on. And, of course, the vice president, she's out someplace campaigning, uh, looking for money. The governor needs to, uh, he's been trying to get them, and uh, I'm sure they're going to come through. But uh, he's been calling the president, hasn't been able to get him. You know how big this place on the beach got hit by that? That's another lie. Earlier in the day, Governor Kemp told reporters he did speak with President Biden and the president offered his assistance. The president just called me uh, yesterday afternoon. I missed him and called him right back. And he just said, hey, what do you need? And I told him, you know, we, we got what we need. We'll work through the federal process. He, he offered that if there's other things we need, just to call him directly, which I appreciate that. So President Biden, of course, spoke to the governor of Georgia, as the governor just underlined there. Later in the day, President Biden was asked about Trump's claims and got fiery as he took questions from reporters in the Oval Office. He is lying. Let me get this straight. He's lying. And the governor told him he was lying. The governor told me he was lying. I've spoken to the governor, I've spent time with him, and he told me he's lying. I don't know why he does this. And the reason I get so angry about it, I don't care about what he says about me. But I care what he, what he communicates to the people in the, that are in need. He implies that we're not doing everything possible. We are. We are. Trump lies so much he can't even remember the word for not lying. <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. Who wants to play a game of fact, state, or dare? I dare you to fact, state. As Hurricane Helene left devastation across the southern U.S., Donald Trump took the opportunity to make a bold and, as it turns out, misleading statement. Trump tried to paint the federal government's hurricane response as slow and inadequate, but the facts didn't align with his claims. Actually, Governor Kemp confirmed that President Biden spoke with him yesterday, offering full support and any additional resources. So Trump's statement is inaccurate. Jessica Tarloff one of the co-hosts of The Five on Fox News, called out Trump's falsehood right on air. ...are running the same old tired playbook that they did with Maui and they did with East Palestine. So not only was Joe Biden on top of this, he signed the disaster declarations even before the storms hit to make sure that there would be no delay in goods and services. Donald Trump's social media posts contain blatant lies, like Governor Kemp can't reach the president. Governor Kemp gave a press conference yesterday where he said, I just spoke to the president. He has promised me every single thing that I need. And there's only one president that we are talking about who actually has denied relief for one of these states. In 2017, Roy Cooper asked after Hurricane Matthew for a lot of money, and he got 1% of his ass. They denied 99% of what he was asking for after that hurricane came. <laughs> There are 3,300 FEMA personnel there, 5,500 National Guardsmen from 11 states, and search and rescue from 19 states. That doesn't reduce the, the devastation of this and how horrific it is, but to say that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are out to lunch during this, or they're sitting on a beach reclining there, they are clearly giving them what they need. They will be showing up when it is appropriate. And it's different for Donald Trump, who is not in office. He's just a guy trying to be president again to show up and throw some bounty at people versus someone who's actually the commander in chief and doesn't want to distract from what's going on. And as Dana said, Governor Cooper said, I will let you know when it is appropriate for you to come. And same goes for Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee, yeah, all of it. He has moved over to demonizing immigrants, even legal ones like the Haitians, or taking the numbers that we were talking about on Friday, the number of, you know, quote unquote, convicted murders, rapists, et cetera, and saying this is all Biden and Harris's fault. And to the extent, I mean, to speak to its inaccuracy, the Department of Homeland Security had to release a statement saying that the ICE figures were being completely misinterpreted, saying the data includes individuals who entered the country over the past 40 years and also includes people that are in jail, not people who are out there roaming the streets. And that's obviously a key piece of information in this puzzle. And the American public is smart enough to know that 
the narrative that Donald Trump is putting forward does not accurately represent what's going on. It doesn't mean there aren't problems, but it does mean that they want more nuance than they're eating the cats, they're I eating the dogs, get them out. I couldn't find the uh, the counter numbers to what ICE had released, and I definitely it looked for matter. them. It doesn't matter. The numbers are... It does. No, it doesn't. It does. It, because, because on Friday when we talked about this, the idea was that this was a Biden-Harris problem. No one said, except for me, I think, that this covers the entire time. No, it's, someone who it's rare to see fact-checking happen in real time, especially on a network that often supports Trump's narrative. So what really happened? Despite Trump's claims, President Biden had already declared a state of emergency in Georgia and multiple other states hit by Hurricane Helene. Federal aid was being deployed immediately, and Governor Brian Kemp confirmed that he spoke with the president about the ongoing relief efforts. Even though Kemp is a Republican, he made it clear that the Biden administration was working in cooperation with state leaders to help in the wake of the hurricane. So why would Trump make such a claim when the facts were so easily verifiable? Well, this isn't the first time he's used a disaster situation to stir controversy. Let's take a look back. From the aftermath of Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico to the California wildfires, Trump has often positioned himself as the critic-in-chief when it comes to disaster response, sometimes pushing narratives that are quickly disproven. Who can forget the infamous paper towel toss after Hurricane Maria? While federal aid was being delivered, Trump criticized local officials and downplayed the severity of the crisis. It's a common tactic, creating a narrative where only he can fix the situation, even when others are doing the work. But this time, his own party member and a Fox News host weren't on board with the falsehoods. It's refreshing to see the facts presented so clearly. Tarloff didn't hold back in correcting Trump's misleading statements, and Kemp's own words backed up the truth. While Trump was busy turning the hurricane into a political football, actual relief efforts were already underway. Federal and state governments worked hand-in-hand -hand to provide immediate assistance to those affected by the storm. This story reminds us of the importance of fact-checking and accountability. In times of crisis, the last thing we need is misinformation. Lives and livelihoods depend on accurate information and swift action. Trump's stunt may have grabbed attention, but it's clear that the federal government was working as expected, even if that doesn't fit into his narrative. So what do you think? Was this just another attempt by Trump to control the narrative? Or did he really believe what he was saying? Let us know in the comments below. President Biden and I will continue to make sure that communities have the support and the resources that they need, not only to respond to this storm and its immediate aftermath, but also the resources they will need to recover. So far, more than 3,300 federal personnel are on the ground to assist with recovery efforts. They are deploying food, water, and generators. And we continue to work with teams on the ground to restore water and power as quickly as possible. To everyone who has been impacted by this storm, and to all of those of you who are rightly feeling overwhelmed by the destruction and the loss, our nation is with you.